あるいはより罪深い暴虐ということだ Three rune stones appeared. Their scale and level of magical energy were wildly different from the other runes. Created by Toko herself at the Mages Association. Okay. They were replicas of one of the lost primordial runes created by a Nordic giant. Oh boy, we know all about those primordial runes now. Oh, Nordic giants, though, their runes are nothing. I think that's where some of Scotty's come from, so. Babe, she's not a giant. No, the mag rune magic came from the giants, though. Yeah, but she stole this one from a giant, not from Scotty, so I'm not worried. Same source, but yeah. I've seen them. I've I mean. But we've seen the giants and their rune magic. Their rune <laughs> magic sucks, it never does anything. <laughs> The three thin crystalline lenses amplified her carved runes tens of millions of times. They rendered projectiles like magic bullets ineffective. That's a theory. Well, they render magecraft projectiles ineffective. Even if Alko's magical output far exceeded Toko's, these giant slabs were several times more powerful still. Alko's signature magecraft could only release magical energy. So she had no way to defend or evade the attack. In theory. Ooh. Ha! A laser. I stole huh? this from you. Laser beam. What? Main set. Main set. Objective axis. Pushing herself on, Elko took a deep breath of resolve. Instead of defending or dodging. She went low and charged into the rune storm. Ah, <laughs> can't hit me, bitch! <laughs> Infuriated by the realization, Toko set her magic crest to full power. Why would that change anything? Well, maybe if I just hit you harder, you'll get hit! <laughs> Through repeated, second-long bursts of time travel, Aoko was able to avoid the runes completely. She was either sending the attack's impacts to a different time, or layering several thousands of herself atop one another. <laughs> wow. Whatever. No way she could keep up that kind of magical energy output. Um, true magic, Toko! Well, theoretically, true magic should still require some mana to power. I'll just borrow it's it from Shizuki. Well... Or steal it from Toko. It's more like she doesn't need to keep it up that long. Hey, Toko, she, she stole time from a boy's childhood. It makes you think she can't just steal your mana. Uh -huh. Or time from you, for that matter. That'd be interesting. What if she just took the time you were at the Mages Association? Mm. Suddenly you don't know how to do shit! <laughs> Alko kicked the crystal slab to pieces. Two remained. Distance, 30 feet. Toko had 10 seconds of magical energy left, but that was all she needed. Alko, on the other hand, would stop now if she had any common sense as a mage. <laughs> If, yeah. She couldn't continue breaking the rules for much longer. Then again, time travel itself was breaking the rules. Exactly. Stop breaking the rules! Once again, Alko used the same technique. Doko's suspicion turned into white hot hatred. She couldn't care less about her time travel formula. It was the amount of magical energy she had. Oh. Where was she pulling the energy necessary to jump through time for so long? <laughs> it was the death of Sojiro Shizuki. If she'd brought him back five minutes to when he was still alive, where would those five minutes go? Alko's magic wasn't using parallel worlds to change this one. She'd only... She had only... Hold on, I had to make sure the, the ah. capture flickered for a second there. She'd only rewound Sojiro's five minutes. Then, logically, he'd return to being a corpse as soon as the magic ended. Time travel that didn't change the world couldn't change the past. 
Oh. Okay. Therefore, if she wanted to save him, she had to either truly resurrect him or send those five minutes of reality somewhere far away without returning them. Huh. Aoko showed no sign of slowing. And behind her crystal barrier, Toko glared at Aoko with disdain. <laughs> Not my fucking problem! I just toss it into the future to make it future me's problem. Counterforce will deal with it someday. Yeah, probably. Fifteen feet to go. Faced with such madness, Toko wanted to cover her eyes. She put the dead of the present in the distant future? <laughs> yeah. A time paradox would have been more humane. <laughs> wow. Such an enormous, haphazard consumption of heat couldn't be allowed. After all... Time travel alone required a massive amount of energy. Yeah, that's a cool shot, too. Magical energy was required to bring things from somewhere else. Well? At the same time, losing something that existed here consumed an incredible amount of energy. And what about the magical energy used for cooling? It either fell out of equilibrium... If, if either fell out of equilibrium, it would mean total chaos. The distortion caused by her magic would come to affect this entire sector of space. Don't like it? Don't push me so far, bitch! <laughs> I mean, might as well. If you throw it far enough, then maybe. It was gonna end anyway, Toko. Heat death of the universe. Well, I think she means she's speeding up the process of getting there. Oh, whatever. That's somebody else's problem. Uh. Oh, you're fat? <laughs> that last comment made Aoko's <laughs> eyes widen. Her every step exerted such force it broke the floorboards beneath her feet. Uh, Morgan tried that. <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily better. Next, fine. Next time I'll throw it to the past. What, you're just gonna <laughs> cause fucking Vesuvius? I don't know. Hmm, this seems problematic. Algo did Pompeii. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that means it already happened, so it's fine. Probably. It means they've got it to work out somehow. The past already happened, Toko. Well... Exactly. Even if the universe were closed or the present were still expanding, the absurd increase in heat consumption would become uncontrollable. That which waits for the end of infinite expansion, infinite consumption, and infinite growth is a future without hope. Well, you're an anti-spiral now, are you? <laughs> Kinda, yeah. The nothingness before creation. Eventually, the universe would burn up. Eventually. No, that's your limitation! <laughs> Quick, just generate a drill out of your own blood and stab her through the chest with it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, well, you did already know that then. Future me will somehow fix it. Five feet to go. The rune blast, now carrying all of Toko's hatred, focused into a scorching hot laser beam. Her body being torn into by the intense heat, and her emotions raging, Aoko drove her foot into the ground. Oh. I don't know, I'll figure that out later. <laughs> 
ールに決まってるでしょ<笑>お前は最悪だ Toko's last defense was shattered. Close enough to connect, the two mages unleashed their magecraft. Red Room's Blue Ether. In a cascade of magic bullets, Toko Aozaki's crests were torn to pieces. Oh. And so was Toko herself. Yeah, so Aoko just shotgunned a bunch of magic bullets, I guess. It was just as Alice said. By the time Sojuro arrived, it was already over. The old school building's wooden boards had survived the elements for decades, but they weren't ready for a mage duel. No, not at all. The entrance door hung off its hinges, <coughs> the floorboards groaned, the stairs were ready to collapse underfoot. Toko's escape and Aoko's pursuit had left a trail of destruction leading all the way to the second floor. The chaos continued to, to the end of the hallway by the stairs to the third floor. Toko sat in a heap with her back against the wall. Despite her injury, she kept her eyes firmly oh, on Aoko. Never mind, she is alive for now. She was bleeding internally and had multiple broken bones. She wouldn't be moving anytime soon. Possibly damaged by Alga's flying kick, her mystic eyes had ruptured from within, closing them indefinitely. Ooh, yeah. Despite her battered and broken body, she was still breathing steadily, a testament to her stubbornness. Before her stood Alko, staring down at her, uninjured. <laughs> What would you have done on the roof? I put a rune on the moon. <laughs> I was gonna use it as a laser. Huh. Toko was not trying to be facetious. She sounded genuinely disappointed. Alka responded with a cold glare. Her azure eyes hadn't changed one bit. They were callous as ever, yet undeniably beautiful. From where she stood, Alko held her hand out toward Toko. <laughs> like a hunter about to put a wounded prey out of its misery. Victor was decided. The mage came to steal land and got a death sentence for her trouble. Well? The silence was disquieting. Moonlight peered through the demolished ceiling, illuminating the two sisters with its stare. The utterly mad sibling squabble was over. Now the fireworks were finished, and the cold wind had returned to claim the old school building. Toko's voice cut through the silence. Toko thought for a moment, before lightly patting her coat pocket. She wanted a cigarette, maybe? Yeah. yeah. I thought she gave a small nod. I agree, though. <laughs> it's like, well, oh, hang on. What, you gonna beg for your life? Yoko's voice was laden with sarcasm, but not hostility or hatred. Perhaps... Perhaps her vendetta wasn't directed at Aoko herself, but rather a product of two sisters born into a mage family. Aozaki no mouth. しかし、<笑> 
リスにしてはよく付き合ってくれた方よ。魔術師としては、いつまでも犯人前っていうのが彼女の結論。けどまあ、そうね。あの狼とならいい勝負をしたんじゃないあ、や。あれはダメだ。敗北を知ってしまった。もう完全じゃない。犯人前に値で勝っていようが魔法の前には得意性を見失うだろうところでアオコお前の魔法とやらは手段か、yeah. それとも結果か kind of like kind of wanted to know if it came before or came after Did Aoko need magic to get where she needed to go? Or did she obtain magic as a result of reaching that place? Hmm. Okay. So, you actually got to the root. She, from my understanding, she got on the, to the verge of the root and then turned back before actually reaching it. Like at the last second, basically. But the first and the fifth both basically did. got there, while They where the second through fourth were methods to were reach methods it. Were methods to getting there. Like one and five were granted because they'd already arrived, and two through four were a means to an end. That's what it seems like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and Alice. Mirror's entrance. ここにユミルのトコユーストエヴリーアウトストレンクシュキュファインデナーズネバテニハイルトユーノニーナンダイモマツノアイヤダタンダソフトはそれで決別したようなものだったよ。Yeah, if you stuck to your grandfather's method, you would have just been one of a generation to eventually get there. アオザキニタイセルフクシュシンはそれには優先されなかった。まあ、すべては終わったことだ。Toko spoke after taking a deep breath. Her last word showed no trace of hatred. Aoko remained silent as she began raising her right hand up high. She recalled her grandfather's orders, the source of true magic. Revealing one's knowledge or impression of the root was strictly forbidden. Ah, okay. But this was her sister's dying wish. Maybe it would be okay. The conversation would end the moment she brought her arm down. Then this rotting shell of a building would become her sibling's tomb. What harm could it do? And it's not like she planned to follow her grandfather's rules anyway. Um. Aoko's voice carried through the blue hallway. Damn. Aoko gave a blunt reply and brought her arm down like a bolt of lightning. Or at least she tried to. Oh, did Sojuro make it? Her arm wouldn't listen to her. It wouldn't budge. What's 
Cursing Alice, Alko spat her question out with venom. Sojuro materialized from behind, taking hold of her raised arm. <coughs> Though unable to express it, Toko was shocked to see him too. Without looking at him, or even at her restrained hand, Alko spoke sternly, her eyes forward. Come to think of it, at the amusement park he appeared out of nowhere to protect her from that puppet. She wasn't bluffing. If he interfered, even he would be given no mercy. I've decided to let you live. Yeah. It would go against that promise, but he should know better. Even so, he maintained his grip on her arm. <laughs> As Aoko turned around, the word told caught in her throat. She immediately regretted looking at him. She saw herself in his expression. Mournful sadness. Judgmental anger. His conflicting emotions spoke to her of her own internal struggle. Voicelessly, quietly, without volition. Rustic, gray eyes questioning a deep sin. <laughs> 